So this is a structured viva task assessing communication with colleagues, information gathering, uh, patient safety, and applied clinical knowledge. Um, the examiner wants to discuss with you regarding uh, Annabel Poole, a 54-year-old patient who underwent a total abdominal hysterectomy 10 days ago for endometrial hyperplasia. She came with continuous leaking of urine. Please answer the examiner question. So this scenario is very typical for uh, fistula, which uh, has been uh, developed post-operatively. And this fistula can be either between the ureter and vagina. We call it ureterovaginal fistula. Or between the bladder and the vagina, we call it vesicovaginal fistula. OK? So the examiner may ask a question, what data from uh, the history you want to know about this patient? So first of all, we need to um, to review her uh, operative notes, okay, and uh, see whether it was a difficult surgery, any organ injury during the the uh, surgery, or any complication, or anything like that, because sometimes we may have uh, like you know bladder injury uh, during the surgery, and later on uh, it will form a fistula or whenever a difficult surgery is there, so the risk of, uh, you know, ureteric injury or bladder injury may be uh, happened and is not diagnosed. So we need to know really uh, about her uh, surgical uh, technique. And then uh, we need to ask her, um, you know, the, the normal, normal history, as we know uh, about the gynae history, the, the urogyne, uh, as we mentioned in the video uh, from the history taking, we need to ask about all the three compartments related to urinary system, uh, prolapse, um, and bowel problems as well, and uh, whether this is a new symptom and when it appears. Um, so usually, uh, sometimes when, when a fistula uh, needs to be formed, uh, it will take time. That's why it's presented 10 days later. Um, we need also to know uh, whether the patient uh, had any pain in her abdomen, like uh, like any uh, any pain related to uh, distension, or uh, if she developed any fever or anything. Because if we had a ureteric injury or bladder injury during the surgery, which is not diagnosed, um, she may have fluid collection inside the abdomen. Okay, uh, we call it uh, uroperitoneum, and that may cause irritation and abdominal pain, distension, and also uh, she can have uh, infection and fever. Okay, so we need to ask about these uh, things and about her recovery from the surgery and whether she had a catheter or no and whether she has any change in her urine color, like if it is if it was blood stained or uh, any any change in her uh, urine volume or urine habit, okay? Urinary uh, voiding, voiding habit, okay? Um, any other uh, previous surgery is very important because if she has like, you know, uh, multiple uh, surgeries before that makes um, you know, us aware that it may be a difficult surgery. Um, any medical history, any any other problem at all in relation to her history, okay? So we will follow uh, the same history as urogyne, as any urogyne case. However, we need to stress on whatever we mentioned now, okay? Um, sometimes um, the examiner will ask, uh, what what is your... Uh, like, you know, suspected or professional diagnosis. The word continuous leaking, uh, continuous can't happen unless there is a fistula. Because, you know, if she has urge incontinence or stress incontinence, it will not be continuous fluid leaking. So the word continuous means that she has a fistula, okay? Because uh, the, uh, when, when the bladder is connected directly to the vagina, or the ureter connected directly to the vagina, there is no sphincter or no space to be filled and then uh, leaks. It will it will leak continuously, okay? 
So what can cause the fistula? So the fistula can, can be uh, caused uh, either by direct injury, okay, during the surgery. Uh, sometimes it may be diagnosed, sutured, and managed well, and later on it can form a fistula, or uh, it, can, it can't be diagnosed uh, during the surgery time. Some, sometimes it may be uh, unnoticed injury, and then that's why uh, the, f the fistula will form later on. Um, one, uh, one cause of the fistula is indirect injury. What is the meaning of indirect injury? When we do dissection and cauterization, and sometimes we may uh, cut the blood supply to a specific part of the bladder or the ureter, okay? And we don't know that uh, we did that during the surgery. And later on, the part who uh, is now uh, devoid of blood supply will, will be necrotic and it will be sloughed, okay? Uh, that can take like up to one week to, to happen. And then fistula will form. Like, you know, it, it, the body will will do epistolization to restore the track and then uh, it will connect to the nearest, uh, like the nearest surface. So sometimes we do that unintended. Uh, when we cut the blood supply accidentally, do you, we call it thermal injury, okay? And uh, that may uh, cause necrosis and uh, sloughing out of the tissue. Um, sometimes um, when we had a hysterectomy, uh, if, if we had like, you know, small collection at the area of the vault, like vault hematoma, but it is a small, sometimes we aim to manage it conservatively so unless there is signs of there are signs of infections uh, which may suggest that this hematoma is getting infection we will not drain it because it, it may be small and there is no need to go for theater we will just follow up and see however later on this vault hematoma uh, can uh, be like you know um, uh, what we call what we call organization tissue can be formed and it may be a new blood vessel formation in this and then a uh, new track will be connecting the bladder and the vagina through this hematoma and a fistula will form so sometimes uh, it may happen as a complication of vault hematoma as well okay that's in relation to surgery there are very rare non-surgical causes which may not be, uh, you know, the case of our uh, case, but, but we consider them uh, as a cause. Uh, if the patient is exposed to radiotherapy, you know, uh, radiation can cause in the arthritis of the trans, and it will be the same idea as we are going to cut the blood supply to a specific part, uh, including bladder or ureter, and then it will slough and a fistula will be forming. Also, if the patient is having neglected pessary, so usually we change the pessary every four to six months, okay? If the patient didn't come for a follow-up for like long, long, long time, the pessary can also erode inside um, the bladder and connect the bladder to the uh, vagina through the anterior vaginal wall. Uh, if the patient has like, you know, um, cancer, the cancer itself can also uh, induce a fistula uh, if it is like uh, cervical cancer uh, or you know bladder urinary bladder cancer when when it is spreading deep inside the tissue uh, it can uh, make a fistula okay or if the patient is exposed to a direct stabbing trauma to her uh, bladder for example like you know uh, accident uh, or any stabbing uh, to her tummy and which may cross the bladder and vagina making a connection. So that's rare cause. They, these are rare causes, but we are really concerned with the, the causes which are, which are related to the surgery, okay? So how we will diagnose the fistula? So we have a suspicion now, but we need to confirm our diagnosis. Um, so first of all, we need to examine this patient. 
we need to confirm the fluid is leaking through the vagina, not through the urethra, okay? Because if it is coming through the urethra, that's a different thing. That's not a fistula. However, if it is fluid coming through the vagina continuously, that's confirming a fistula. To confirm that this is a urine, which which is not like excessive secretions, because sometimes if we have a vault hematoma, sometimes it may cause discharge, excessive discharge, and coming as a fluidy discharge from the vagina. So we need to take a sample from this fluid and send it to to confirm that it is urine. Um, sometimes we may need to do uh, the creatinine level of this fluid, and if it if it came high, that, that's, that's the urine, okay? So first of all, we need to confirm fluid coming from vagina. Then we'll take a sample from this fluid to confirm it is a urine. So now we confirm it there is a urine coming from the vagina. So we need to know where where is our fistula. Is it connecting the, the vagina to the bladder or connecting the vagina to the ureter? So what we need to do, we need to uh, put the patient in lithotomy position, okay? Uh, we bring uh, indigo carmine and inject it through the urethra, through the bladder, I mean, inside the bladder, and see if the fluid coming from the vagina is changing in, in its color to blue. That means the bladder is connected to the vagina. However, if the color of urine uh, if the fluid coming from the vagina remains clear, that means it, it's the ureter which is connected to the um, the vagina. Okay, so we do what we call a retrograde cystography. That's what we did, and then we need to do an examination under anesthesia and cystoscopy. <clears throat> so we will counsel the patient that she needs examination under anesthesia. Uh, we need to explore the whole vaginal wall because sometimes the fistula may be very, very, very small. We can't see it and we need proper visualization of whole uh, vagina. So that possibly uh, needs anesthesia. And at the same setting, we will put a cystoscope and see from inside to confirm whether we have any, um, you know, um, vesicovaginal fistula or not. Okay. Um, so once we confirm the presence of fistula, what we need to do? First of all, if the fistula is small, like, you know, if it is like less than one centimeter, uh, we need to give a time for um, the tissue to heal and uh, give, give time maybe or possibly the fistula can resolve by its own. So we need to catheterize the patient. Um, and we need to counsel her about the condition that with catheterization uh, that help the drainage of the urine without affecting her fistula, uh, fistula. and uh, that also needs time. Like, you know, it can be from six to 12 weeks um, left with a catheter. So we need to uh, refer the lady to be followed up in the community by the um, a specialized nurse in the continency clinic, they can follow up and do the change of the urine and confirm that the catheter is draining well. Um, we need also to instruct the patient to report if she feels that the catheter is not draining or if she feels any signs of infection, uh, any foul smell or any, any uh, pain or any problem related to her catheter, okay? And after that, uh, we will uh, see her if we need to repair it surgically or no. Okay. So if it is if it is persistent after that period of time and needs surgical repair, the surgical repair can be uh, done through either vaginal route or abdominal route, depending on the size and the site of the uh, fistula. Okay. And then we need to catheterize her again after, after repairing of the fistula. And we need to inform the patient about the uh, risk of recurrence. And that's why we need to leave the catheter at least post-repair for at least three weeks, okay? 
And before removing the catheter and uh, do the trial without catheter, we need to have another uh, retrograde cystography and see that uh, it is healed completely, and then we can remove the catheter. Okay? Thank you.